Hi everyone, it's Kronos and um, in this video I would like to be trying something new. So, as you guys know, I've been summoning in um, almost every single banner that's been co coming out and after making that one year anniversary video, link in the description below, I realized that I have many sets and um, there's this one YouTuber that I really like from a different game called Shironeko Projecto rune story jp but he basically summons every single time a new character comes out showcases it which i have been doing but then he also makes this was it worth it style sort of video where he talks about abilities and um stuff like that so that's what i would like to try doing this video so if you all enjoy it please let me know down in the comment section below but yeah so, worth it. Was Velenga and Mercura worth it? So, okay, so I'll start by talking about the Mercura set. So, the abilities. I'll be comparing the abilities with the other Soul Spear sets. So, let's just start with the Mercura one. So, Pale Crystaloth, which is the armor ability. Water damage plus 36%, normal attack damage plus 12%, Ren recovery plus 24%. And then if we look at um, the other, other um, Soul Spear abilities, we go into Galdora. So lightning damage plus 32%, attack speed plus 8%, dodge distance plus 8%, and then Necroth. Dark damage plus 36%, soul gauge charge rate plus 12%, damage plus 18% during annihilation. So um, elemental damage wise it's high, it's with Necroth. Um, Galdora is actually on the lower side. And then you have normal attack damage. I feel that that's sort of a waste because um, if we compare... actually let's just talk about the weapon first. So with the water one. Water damage plus 30%, normal attack damage plus 15%, dodge distance plus 10%. So, we get the extra dodge, which is pretty important with the soul spears. And then we have um, the water damage. That's higher than the dark damage you get. So, dark damage plus 28%, uh, dark damage plus 28%, rend charge time minus 7%, damage plus 14% during annihilation. So, um... And then if we go into Galdora, lightning damage plus 30%, so water damage being the highest. Attack speed plus 5%, soul gauge charge speed plus 15%. So I'm pretty happy that this set doesn't have any soul gauge charge speed because that's pretty useless on soul spears because you can charge it up really quickly anyway with the roll attack. I think it charges with like two full roll attack combos. But my main biggest concern about the water, um, the normal the set is the normal attack damage plus 12 just normal attack damage so yes you get normal attack damage but that does not increase your magi damage nor is it nor does it increase the spin attack damage or the ren damage so it's just going to be the normal tap combo attack whereas um with the necroth set you have damage during annihilation and that that will also increase everything so as long as you're in soul mode i'll just call it soul mode all your damage will be increased so you'll also and the fact that um the damage during annihilation is higher than the attack damage that the mercury set gives that's also um what worries me a bit i feel like the attack damage could have been higher so or then the um the annihilation dam damage during annihilation could have been a bit lower on the necroth set so that's sort of what worries me so i feel like that's a bit wasted in a way it could have been damage during annihilation so here as you see i made a damage comparison with um while you're in soul mode and fire off a maggie whereas while you're not in soul mode annihilation whatever Firing off a Maggie with both Necroth and Mercura sets. And as you see, I dealt like 100,000 more damage with the Necroth set. Because 
during soul mode because of the damage during annihilation. So that was the Mercurius set. I'll talk about whether the full thing was worth it or not in the end after I finish with the Valenga set. Now then, we'll start with the armor from the Valenga set. So fire damage plus 36, flame cataclysm despot. Fire damage plus 36%, dodge distance plus 12%, soul gauge drain speed minus 6%. And then with the CL armor piece, light guidance, light damage plus 36%, soul gauge charge rate plus 12%, then damage plus, this should be 12% during Hawkeye. So, they both have the same amount of elemental damage, then this is where it comes a bit tricky. So. Soul gauge charge rate plus 12%, that's really good, but instead here we have soul gauge drain speed minus 6%. So the CL armor set, you can dump in all the yin and yang stuff. With the CL soul bow set, you can dump in all the yin and yang stuff so you can deal more damage and won't have to worry about increasing the soul gauge charge speed. So that's pretty big, whereas here, um, you can't dump in all the flame incarnations or whatever if you have let's say you have 12 but you um, you also have a few champions Viger or magic champion seal where you increase the soul gauge charge rate you can't dump in 12 fire incarnations or at least I wouldn't because the soul gauge charge speed would then become too slow and then the drain speed so there's no Maggie to increase or decrease the drain speed so that is where it becomes a bit tricky so if you have a few champion um a few passive maggies that can increase the soul gauge charge speed then i would say that that um the flame cataclysm despot would be it would be good or not the whole ability but soul gate the soul gauge drain speed would be useful but if you don't then I would say that the soul gauge charge speed would be a bit better because even if it runs out you can quickly go back in and then dodge distance plus 12% so dodge distance is also I would say pretty useful on soul bows but the damage during Hawkeye that's where all the big damage comes in so the CL armors the CL set has it on the armors and um, so you'll get a total of 48 um, 48 with the main starting abilities so that is a bit tricky so that probably outclasses the C the CL armor set outclasses um, the whatever um, Valenga armor set when it comes to abilities now let's go into the weapons so holy let's start with the Valenga bow so Infernal Tyrant. Fire damage plus 30%, damage plus 30% during Hawkeye. And then CL. Holy Light. Light damage plus 28%, bow damage plus 7%, dodge distance plus 14%. So, I would say that the CL bow abilities are pretty bad. So, you have a bit less light damage from the original ability. Bow damage plus 7% I would say is pretty useless. You definitely want elemental damage so I feel like they could have just made it light damage plus 35% and then dodge distance plus 14% so you have the dodge distance from for the CL set on the bow so like if you put in the abilities together You'll be doing more damage during, and you have 7 out of 7, you'll be doing more damage in Hawkeye with the Valenga set, which is a lot better, because you'll have at least 90%, whereas with the CL set you only have 48%, so about half. And then dodge distance, again, you have a bigger dodge distance with the Valenga set, so it all comes down to the soul gauge charge speed but then again the soul with the soul bow it charges up pretty quick anyway so I would say that the Valenga set is better than the CL set now then time for the big question is it worth it but before I do start talking about this I also have to say that the water soul spear the mercurial spear has 
probably the best slot you can get for Soul Spear. So you can have a barrier and a buff without having to worry about um, healing because you can heal. But anyway, back to the main question. So, is this banner worth it or not? So, um, it really depends on what you're looking for. So, the best case scenario is if you want to fight, if you're in need for a fire and water set, because then everything you get is, you can use. It won't be lapis or anything, everything will be good. But most of the time you'll have only one thing you want, so if there, it's only one thing that you want, so let's just have it in that sort of scenario. So, let's start with, if you're looking for a strong soul bow set, yes, it's worth it. This bow set is stronger than CL in my opinion. And if you have the Maggie Blistering Claws, you can use it on more Behemoth because it will debuff the Behemoth and lower their fire defense, so you'll be dealing a lot more damage. Now then, if you're looking for a strong fire set, again, yes, but you should, um, but this will depend on whether or not if you have IMA or not, because I think that's probably the only other fire set that can match this one. So, um, yeah, if you don't have IMA and you're looking for a strong fire set, I highly recommend that you summon this set. And if you're looking for a strong soul spear set, no, this is because um, it's this um the soul spear set is meant to dish out high attack damage. This set, but um they sort of limited that by making the abilities dam a normal attack damage boost. So um that will only affect part of the um damage you dish out. Whereas Necroth has annihilation dam damage during annihilation. So um, that's basically everything goes up as shown, Maggie, Rend and everything. If you're looking for a strong water set, that's maybe. So, first of all, the Soul Spear is definitely a hard weapon to use. Unlike Soul Bow, it's pretty easy. But, um, yeah, so it's, first of all, a hard set to use. This will highly depend on what kind of Maggies you have as well. Support Maggies, mainly. So, if you don't have a shield Maggie or some sort of fire, uh, shield Maggie or fire ward, then I would not recommend this because it will be very difficult to use. But otherwise, yeah, if you have like, for example, a shield plus a buff, then you'll be hitting like a tank. But yeah, this was all for this video. Um, this is also all my opinion, so um, you can disagree as well, feel free. But yeah, um, if you also have any suggestions on how to improve this, please let me know in the comment section below. Well, this was all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye!